If you've, uh, if you've ever played around with batteries much, uh, maybe you've tried this before. Uh, I remember doing this a few times when I was younger. Uh, if you connect the positive and negative ends directly of a battery, you know, using a wire or a paper clip or something, you, you immediately realize, wow, I've made a big mistake because the battery and the, resi the wire or the, the paper clip, they get extremely hot extremely fast. There's a large amount of heat being generated by that. Uh, which, by the way, is, is not a good thing to, uh, to do, especially not to leave long term. You can start, uh, start external fires that way, or uh, you know, the battery can actually become unstable and rupture, and you get battery acid on yourself, and it's, it's a really dangerous thing, actually. Uh, so probably not a great thing for me to have been playing with when I was a kid, but well, what can you do? Uh, so one question you might ask then is, uh, well, how much heat was it that was generated? So that's what we're going to look at now. How much heat is generated by uh, some current passing through some material that's providing a, at least a little bit of a resistance, which is everything, uh, so, or just about everything. Um, so we have the special case of a superconductor. And in a superconductor, as far as we can tell, it's literally zero uh, energy that, uh, that gets trans, uh, transformed into other forms like heat. Uh, but every other ordinary material, we have some energy transferred into heat. So let's look at this circuit. And you'll notice that I'm using a little bit different setup than we have before. Um, we're kind of getting into the point where we need to, uh, need to show circuits uh, that are a little more complex. and So we have a system for drawing these things uh, that's, that's pretty easy to work with. So first off, we have this symbol right here. That symbol is uh, taking the place of the battery. And on this symbol, um, we use a long line and a short line. Really, this is supposed to be just a one-cell battery. If you have a multi-cell battery, you might have multiple short lines and multiple long lines. but. Um, anyway, for, for our purposes, this symbol worked just fine. Um, on these, the long line represents the positive end of that power source, and the short line represents the negative end of the power source. So current is flowing through in this direction, remember, positive to negative. Even though really it's the electrons that move and they go in this direction, we say current flows this way. If the positive charges could move, they'd be moving this way. Okay, so we've got our battery shown here, and then our resistor, uh, we just draw as a squiggly line. So, straight line for a wire, squiggly line for a resistor, straight line for a wire. That's it. Pretty simple schematic here. So, all I've got is a battery connected to a resistor, and I want to know how much energy is changed into heat, how much, uh, or it is changed into the internal energy of, uh, um, of the surrounding objects, so how much is transferred as heat. Uh, by this resistor, by this current going through this resistor. Well, heat is an energy transfer, so we need to know something about how much energy changes. So energy change here, we're talking about delta Ue, the, uh, the change in electric potential energy. And you write that with a capital E. So how much energy is changed? So um, however much uh, electrical energy we start with, we're going to lose some of that energy. And uh, that energy is well, its not really lost. It's just changed into a different form. It's transferred as heat. We're looking specifically at this location here on the resistor. So we have some amount of energy that changes forms right there. Well, uh, we, we might have a difficult time um, analyzing that written out as it is right now. So instead, it might make sense to think of this in terms of voltage, how much of a voltage drop we have over that point. Now remember, voltage is just the change in electric potential, not potential energy, but electric potential. So there's some delta V there, and if we multiply that by the amount of charge that passes through, um, we get the, uh, the amount of potential energy that's been changed. So if we stuck a meter here and we could measure out what the, uh, what the voltage is at this point, call it V1, and what the voltage is at this point, again, not really voltage, electric potential at those two points, um, and we can figure out then what's the voltage drop between those two. Now then we could just multiply that by Q, the charge, 
and uh, we'd figure out how much energy we've lost in the form of electric potential, so that's how much energy we've gained in the form of uh, heat being transferred away from this. But again, it's tough to measure that Q. Now, these charges are constantly moving around here, and the rate at which they move is I, the current. And we know that I is equal to the current, or is equal to the, uh, the number of charges that move from one place to another divided by the amount of time that it takes, or the amount of charge, rather, divided by the amount of time. And so if we then um, use this equation over here, um, we could note that our change in potential energy over time is it exactly equal to just this value over time. So delta V Q over time. And this part of it is equal to our current. And so the rate at which energy changes is equal to the change in uh, electric potential. So we call that the voltage. We usually just write that as a capital V for electronics times the current. Now if, uh, if we wanted to, so that's, that's the amount of heat transferred for each second that goes by, if, if those are our units here. Um, and so the amount of energy per time actually is, is a thing all on its own. We call that the power. The power is equal to, I usually write this as IV. I think that's just easier to remember because you think of IV like intravenous, it just kind of flows nicely. So P equals IV, the amount of power, um, that's the, the rate at which energy changes per time is equal to the current times the voltage drop across this resistor. So if we know the current, we know how much the, the electric potential changes between those two points. We just multiply those together, and that tells us how much energy is changed per time. And then, you know, if we want to know, okay, well, how much energy is changed in five minutes, we'll just multiply it by five minutes or 300 seconds. Now, we also, uh, we, we may not have a value for I or for V, so we also need to keep in mind, so this is an important equation, we also need to keep in mind that we have the equation V equals IR. So instead of V over here, I could write that as I times R and get that power can also be expressed as I squared times R, the current squared times the resistance. Or, going back here, I could uh, move the R to the other side and get I is equal to V over R. And I could plug this term in for I and get that P is equal to V over R times V. So P is equal to V squared over R. So all three of these are uh, ways to calculate the power uh, dissipated by a, uh, by a resistor over some uh, some amount of time then. Now, I notice on the equ AP equation sheet, this equation is given to you, and Ohm's law is given to you, but these two forms down here, these ones are not given. So it's definitely worth, uh, worth reviewing this derivation, how we get from having these two equations to uh, uh, how we combine those to get these two forms, because you may be asked to find power but not given, say, voltage, you have to use this equation. Or maybe you're not given current, and then you have to use this equation. So definitely uh, uh, be sure to review that. Now power, we've worked with already. In any of these, power is measured in watts. And we know that current is in amps, resistance is in ohms, voltage is in volts. So the only one that we haven't worked with recently is watts. That's the same thing as joules per second.